classes here, whoever they are, or maybe her. But how do kids like these become the types of people that do things like this? Maybe we should ask this guy. Knowledge is heavy. Sometimes it's a limit to, to have new ideas. That's the problem with the old schooling, because they were teaching answers. I believe questions are probably more important today than the answers. Erno's cube is a question waiting to be answered. And when the right person finds the right question, something amazing happens. They start seeing the world as it truly is. Not a place to be memorized, but a place to be figured out, flipped, turned, twisted, and ultimately made better forever. Today, she may be an octopus, but help kids like her fall in love with problem solving, and they will embark on journeys to become scientists, artists, engineers, designers, inventors, or something no one's ever been before but you can bet we're gonna need. That's why moments like this, go, and this, and this, and especially this, are so important. Because there are companies to found, planets to walk on, time machines to invent, a future to be made amazing. We may not know what it's going to look like, but we know who's going to do it. Good evening. I'm Courtney Carpenter, your campus principal for Dolores W. McClatchy Elementary. And it is with great excitement that I stand here today and to share that video with you as the beginning and end with the end in mind. On this summer, we're going to embark on a journey um, our staff will be with the innovator's mindset. We're going to be looking to empower learning at McClatchy. We're going to be looking to unleashing talent. And we're going to be learning to uh, lead a culture of creativity. I want to introduce to you a few people um, before we get started this evening. I would like to take a moment to introduce to you Becky Wigginton, our counselor. Ms. Wigginton. <laughs> Mr. Anthony Doris will be our library media specialist. <laughs> Mrs. Colleen Hurd will be our campus secretary, so you will see her in her office. And just to take a moment, uh, Dr. Ledbetter, is he in here? Okay, he was in the building a few moments ago and stepped out. We have Dr. Ashley Stewart in the back. She is our assistant superintendent, one of our assistant superintendents. We started this journey on this campus. It's been a good two years ago or so. When I was named principal last May, we began looking at the vision of this campus. A vision for creating experiences for our 21st century learners. A vision for creating a culture of character, which will be very important to us, and Ms. Wigginton will talk about that in a little bit, for students, staff, families, and our community. A vision for inspiring excellence in our students to go change the world. And a vision for fostering growth mindsets in our students and our staff to embrace learning and growth, to understand the role of effort, and to persevere in the face of setbacks. Now, how we prepare for this evening is we we, we went about it a couple different ways. We went ahead and sent out a Google form in January to our parent email group that was in ParentLink and wanted to gather information from our parents as to what questions you had in different areas about the building, construction process, transportation, technology, staffing, and those things that you probably have lots of questions about. So we're going to address those questions tonight. And then at the end of the night, if there's anything um, you want to stay behind and talk about or write it on an index question, we will be putting the Q&A up on our website as well. I would like to introduce to you at this time, David Boswell. He's our MISD Director of Construction Projects. Come on, Mr. Boswell. Now, I know at some point uh, we're going to be answering some of your questions, but I've got a question for you right off the bat, and I want an honest answer, a show of hands. I know a lot of you have driven by the site. How many of you have driven by there and looked at that building and gone, oh, my Lord, they're never going to finish it. Okay? <laughs> It's going to be finished, I, I promise you, I promise you. We had quite a setback during the winter, but we're on an expedited schedule and we're tracking along well. It's going to be close, there's, there's no getting around that, but we are going to be finished and there's no 
workers going to be in the building at the same time as your kids, you know, painting and brushing up and hanging hardware, so don't worry about that. What do we do now? I'm going to plug your pictures. Okay. I've got a few pictures here. The, the first one is a picture of the, the east wall of the north wing, the fourth and fifth grade wing, Thank you. which is, is nearing completion. Uh, all the masonry is, is complete on the east and north side. They're finishing it up the west side. The interior, we're, we're on the second phase of sheetrock, and the painter's going to be starting next week. So that ends in pretty good shape. That looks like a finished building. This is the other end. <laughs> this is Miss Carpenter's office right here. We thought we'd finish her up last. But this, uh, the little tower there is our main entryway. And then the, the lower portion is, a, is the admin area. The vaulted portion in the back will be the library. And what you see over in the, on the far side there is the, is the cafeteria. And the, the block wall back there is the gymnasium. Got the pointer. Okay. That's just another shot, the front side of the of the admin area. That's the God, there's that's a muddy mess. <laughs> this is the visitor parking lot. Don't don't look at that mud. It won't be that mud. Oh sorry. And that's a that's a shot of the of the cafeteria kitchen area and you look through there and see the gymnasium. The parent loop comes off of Bryson. I don't know if y'all have driven by there, but it comes around around behind the fourth and fifth grade wings circles around and we'll make a big circle and drop off right there in, in front of the kindergarten where well, they'll come into the cafeteria and the, and the gymnasium. And we'll show that in a few moments. Yeah. We'll a picture of that. This is a couple of shots. This is in that unit D, the fourth and fifth grade wing. This is in a typical classroom. As you can see, you know, we're well underway in our sheetrock. This is one of the features in all the, all the classroom. There's a window over the wet area which you can you know, one classroom can look over into the adjacent classroom. Why? I don't know. Ask Ms. Carter. Transparency. Okay. Okay. I just build them. I don't design them. In fact, my design got every kicked day, out. Every day. <laughs> this is a shot down the corridor. It's showing what uh, we lovingly call our collaboration areas. This is one of our, our themes, I guess, collaboration and transparency. Uh, there's going to be a lot of activities. These are enlarged corridors. There's going to be soft flooring carpet in front of the, of the zigzag walls there and hard flooring in front over here on the corridor. And there'll be lots of activities for your kiddos to do outside the classrooms as well as inside the classrooms. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Questions? I think I've answered the first one. Yes, we are going to be through with that building, or I'll be looking for another job. Um, construction workers in the building? No. More than likely, there will still be some activities going on. We call them punch list items after school starts, but those activities will all take place either after school or on weekends. They will not be there while your kiddos are in school. Contingency plan? It's just, it's going to be ready. <laughs> That's the contingency plan. Uh, the structural plans for severe weather. Is that the question they wrote in about the yes. tornado yes. shelter? Okay, this building is built similar to all the rest of our buildings, which is, adheres to a 2009 building code. That building code will resist, the structure will resist up to 90 mile an hour winds. That's the design criteria. It's technically not a tornado shelter. The 2015 the building code that's under review now will have that incorporated into it. But all of our building, including McClatchy and all, all the other buildings in the district, do not have, they're not qualified or rated as a tornado shelter. We have shelter in place, which is mainly in the, all the quarters where you've got your short span joist and your columns in the wall. That's where we'll shelter the kiddos during a during a, a severe weather event, but it's not a tornado shelter. Okay. That's that it? That's, that's, your, that's your slide. So, thank you. <laughs> he does a great job. And he keeps me in line, so thank you, Mr. Boswell. <laughs> okay, then we wanted to go over transportation. We have Deanna Cannon here. Um, where's Deanna? Deanna. 
she's our director of transportation. And Dana Rackin, I was with her, but I think De Deanna, they're both going to, I don't know if they're both coming, but Deanna, come on up. that uh, this last Monday night. So those two areas will have um, walk zone areas. There will not be bus transportation for that. At this time, we have, um, with our current numbers that we're basing on, we have uh, five bus routes set in place for McClatchy. We'll be sure that this, this they just gave me for the walk zones map. We'll put that on our website with the presentation. So we'll have it. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have some questions on instructional building design. Um, how will it vary from current MISD school designs like Long Branch and Mountain Peak? Um, this campus is very different than those. Um, as most of you know, some of you know, Long Branch, Mountain Peak, and Matoski are very much the same floor plan. Um, but this building is very different. We have Mr. Boswell alluded a little bit to the collaboration of flexible learning spaces. So this is a typical corridor um, where he talked about having the ca carpet and soft seating extending into the hallway so you have a traditional classroom with extended class area, learning area out here for some flexible spacing. And then your VCT flooring for your walkway for the classes that are they're transporting back and forth. So that is a, a typical hallway, and I'll show you a, a site plan in a minute that kind of gives you the layout of the building and where the grade levels are. Um, but that there is a rendering of a typical collaboration hallway with some soft seating. You'll notice here that the students have opportunity for collaboration on rideable surfaces on the walls, um, in addition to their you know some technology things that we'll talk about in just a moment. So that is a collaboration hallway there. And then the teachers as well, um, we like to consider them learning designers. And so in each pod that we have, each teacher, each grade level of teachers will have a basically a think tank. And it's an area for them to go and to design work and plan for students. Um, they've got their own thinking spot here that they can plan, design, walk away from it, come back. And this is kind of a bird's eye view of what that looks like. But they have those areas as well designated for them to collaborate with each other. The next question we had on that was, will a whole grade level be in the same hallway? And this is where we have um, a picture to show you. So this is kind of a site plan. Um, this front unit A here, this is your front entrance. And this is unit A, so you have your admin wing here, your cafeteria, your gym area. And then this is the library area right here, kind of as the hub of the campus. And Mr. Doris will give us a, a talk about that just a little bit. We have unit B here, which is second and third grade. So second and third grade will be in this pod with special populations and collaboration classrooms down the center. Unit C is kindergarten and first grade. You'll notice kindergarten classrooms have restrooms inside of them. So kinder is along this wing, and you come around on this side and you have first grade with additional special populations classrooms in the, in the center. The counseling uh, office will be right here in the, in the middle hub of the campus. And then fourth and fifth grade will be back here in unit D. Um, and they have the same kind of setup, it's just a different shape. Um, but the classrooms are set up in, in pods. So we have a K1, a 2-3, and a 4-5 pod. Will the classrooms be traditional or open classrooms? That's been a question. Um, the word open, I think, has kind of floated around a little bit because of the collaboration idea. Um, and so, you know, Several years ago when we heard about the open concept, that's a very different, different than what you're going to see in here. We still have traditional classrooms. This is a traditional classroom set up here. Um, we have table areas where the tables can be configured into different shapes there. 
um, with some of the additional soft seating in the classrooms. This is the, the wall that Mr. Boswell showed a few moments ago that has the windows in between classrooms for some for transparency there. They can also shut for privacy if they need to shut for blinds, but they do have the opportunity to have that transparency between classrooms. The building will be open for public tours. That is yet to be determined. Um, but the plan is we don't want Meet the Teacher Night to be the first time that you get to step inside the building. So once we get um, in the building and we, we have access to the building, we will schedule some of those in August. That is the plan, is to schedule some times in August that's convenient for different groups, whether a morning one and maybe an afternoon and maybe an evening so that we can have some tours of the building prior to the first week when teachers are trying to get ready and meet the teacher night. We do not want that to be the first time you've stepped inside the building. So we will be working on that schedule and we'll communicate that as we know more. Um, as we have a better timeline for that. The instructional makeup of the schedule is still um, in line with the uh, Midlothian ISD, and so we will be, um, you know, with your, your main, main uh, core content areas, so ELAR, Math, Science, Social Studies, um, Art, Music, and PE, we will have the same uh, instructional content as other Midlothian schools, same scope and sequence, and the same support from the Department of Learning that every other campus has. Had a question about end of the year awards. At this time, we have not covered that that far in advance yet, but we will. Um, most award recognitions will likely remain consistent to the other campuses. In terms of technology, we've had a few questions um, about a computer lab and students having technology cl actual class. Um, there is not a computer lab in this campus, and um, that is something that. In this day and age, um, devices are portable, everything's wireless, and so we will not have a designated computer lab. And students will have technology integrated into their uh, core content and even their encore classes, their art, music, and PE, there will be times that technology will be integrated in there as well. So as far as their keyboarding and skills, those things will be incorporated into the general ed classroom. But we will not have a, a separate technology class. Um, we've done a lot of technology research over the last several months. We've been to several vendor fairs, we've been to several districts, we've been uh, to Little Elm, Coppell, Frisco, Keller, several different places um, and also sending emails out to other states trying to figure out what, what they've got going on in their districts that are building new campuses. And so we are in the process of getting some of the latest and greatest information on technology from those schools. We're looking at some interactive touch screen flat panels, which you see here. And I'll demonstrate something on it in a moment. I'm not good, very good at it, but I will demonstrate. And then devices such as iPads, laptops, Chromebooks, etc. We're still working through that process and um, working with our uh, technology department and instructional technology department for the needs of this campus. And Mr. Doris, it's your turn. All right, well, the, we came up with the mill because we didn't want it just to be a repository for books. That's what a library is. Now, at the same time, I don't want to throw away or have anybody scared that we're going to get rid of books. They're always going to be there because reading is so essential. Now there's all types of literacy, and the literacy could be simply books, but it can also be ebooks, and it can also be learning um, a new computer language. So we're going to be teaching your students just about everything we can. And what we want to do is we want your students to follow their passion. I'm passionate about your student being the leader of their own learning. I want the mill to be a place where they build on the learning they want. They, they may come to me and say, I want to know about how to make a, a catapult. Well, let's make one small and you can go home and tell dad to make one big enough to throw pumpkins. <laughs> Which we've done. We've thrown pumpkins at, at Baxter. Um, and we also made electric powered bikes and we're going to be getting a Lego wall and we're going to do a, a wall with magnets to make uh, marble runs. And So we're going to reach out there and do things that are a little different because we want the mill to be a place where everybody comes, mills around, makes things, does things, reads things, does things, um, and accomplishes their own personal goals. We're really about passion, what it is that makes you want to be in charge of your own money. We don't want it to be sit and get, we want to be the guide. So I like to think of myself as the mill guide. I'm there to find out what it is that you want to learn, what do you want to do, and to help you do it. I don't have as much a a, a lead as I'm following what's going on in the classrooms, what's going on with the teachers, what's going on with the students, and I'm going to make sure that everybody that is at that campus has what they need to do what they want to do and to learn what they want to learn. So that's what we're going to do at, at, at the meal. We're going to have fun, but the problem is I'm one person, but y'all are a whole bunch of people, 
And you all have so many expertise that we're inviting you to be a part of our community, to bring that, that that you know to show and share with our students. So if you're a cook, a vet, an engineer, a biologist, a mom, whatever it is that your passion is, whatever your strengths are, bring them to the school and share them with our students. Because there's going to be some kid that you're going to spark. If you just spark one kid, you're going to be doing something fabulous. Because that one kid may one day grow up to be something because they spoke with you and had a connection with you. So I hope that you join me in this journey. Thank you, Mr. Doris. He touched briefly on uh, knowing what your passion is, and, and that's going to be a great segue into Ms. Wigginton in just a minute and what she's going to talk about. But we are looking to, um, one of the things we want to work into our daily schedule is, or into our weekly schedule is lamp time, and that's learning about my passion and giving your children a time to learn about something they are passionate about because we expect so much from them all week long that we want to in turn give them some time back um, to teach us some things and to learn about some things that they might not traditionally learn about at school. So we're exploring some ideas with that. We visited um, a couple of campuses in a, in a district up north um, right before spring break and it was, it, was, it was awesome. We were very excited, came away electrified with that. All right, Mrs. Wigginton. She is. I'm quiet. I'm uh, Becky Wigginton, counselor. I've been a counselor for a long time, but Ms. Carpenter and I have been working together. And one thing that uh, she and I share is a common vision of character. And that while students are going to school, obviously, to learn and to be those 21st century learners, it's also our jobs to teach them character. We want them to go out into the community, into your homes, and in our building, everywhere they go, and show character and so part of a you know way that we get that across to students is coming up with a common language and so you're going to see purpose passion and pride everywhere those are going to be three words that we are going to talk repeatedly with them we're going to talk about it uh, you know in the cafeteria as they're getting quiet to eat their lunch we're going to talk about it in the classroom when they're working and um, are they doing what what they're doing are they doing it with purpose with passion? Are they showing pride in their work? Um, in the hallways, when they're you know walking about the building, these are times where we're going to bring up this common language and you can apply it in so many situations. And so we feel like if you've got a common core language with the students and you can show them how all these things are applied in lots of ways, lots of things that I do, the way I work, the way I act, the way I think, the way I learn, then when they grow up, hopefully we have instilled character in them that will take them into their jobs, uh, their careers, their families and such. So you're going to see this language. It's going to be integrated. I hope your kids when they come home that they're going to start using these words and you're going to know what they mean and they can tell you what, what they mean. Um, now as far as I, I go, we will do classroom guidance lessons. I'll come in and do guidance lessons and they'll probably talk about other things of course that are integrated. We're looking at a couple of different uh, maybe curriculums or things. Um, one is character counts, and there's like six pillars of character, and of course those are words with trustworthiness and fairness and citizenship and, and things like that. That will also be incorporated, but we just want character to be incorporated in everything, that it's not just my job or Ms. Carpenter's job, but it's everyone's job. Um, it's a culture. So even when you're on our campus, that we hope that you know, you're using that language as well. Teachers will be using it everyone, every every staff member. Um, so that's a little bit about it. You'll, you'll get more in the mail, so you're already seeing those words on it, on, on all the uh, mailings and things that you're coming out. And so it's a good time to go ahead and start talking to your student about those words. Thank you. Another great resource for everyone is that lady right there. You will You will find out that she is a great resource for all of us. Okay, we have some questions on staffing, so I'm going to address that at this time. What has been the process for staffing um, internally and externally? Um, this has been a process. I can, I can assure you that the staffing process has been one of the largest for me um, to tackle, and it's been amazing because I've gotten to talk to some wonderful teachers inside and outside of the district. We opened, uh, once the zoning process was done in December, we opened up the internal transfer process in January, and it was open for a couple of weeks, and any teacher in the district um, had the opportunity to put in for an internal transfer. Um, now, just because they put in for an internal transfer did not mean they were guaranteed a spot at McClatchy. 
So what I did, what we did is we took, we probably had, I want to say somewhere between 48 and 52 internal interests in our campus. And I took all, all of those and did um, the first round of a structured interview process called Human X Ventures, which is really focusing on the who of, of who a teacher is. And so we went through that process on all 48 to 52 of those people. And from that process, um, we took that number down to 24 that we invited back for a face-to-face. -face. Now, again, these are internal candidates. So these are teachers that already have jobs in our district. But it's very important to us to have the right people in the right places for this campus and the vision of this campus that we make sure we have those teachers that are ready to take this and run with it. So we did 24 face-to-face -face interviews and um, we're going to end up with about six, about 17 to, uh, 17 to 19 internal candidates on our campus. And those candidates are in the process of being invited um, to join McClatchy. And with that being said, there will be a few outside openings that we're in the process of interviewing right now as well. So in the next couple of weeks, we will have staffing solidified, and I will. What we'll do is we will put those um, spotlights on our campus webpage and then push it out um, because we're not. We don't have our teams completed yet, so we didn't want to give you information on partial teams. It's not fair to everybody that's in the process. So we will get those out as soon as we are done. But I can promise you, through that interview process, we saw some of the most amazing ideas and things coming our way um, for this campus, and they are passionate about learning with our students and also being 21st century learning designers and not just a teacher of knowledge. So you're going to be, your kid, your children will be in great hands when it comes to whichever teacher they end up with. Um, they are coming from all over the district and there's some coming from um, uh, surrounding districts and different places. So we are working on finalizing that in addition with the office staff. But um, this group here was announced tonight because they've been in place for a few weeks now. Um, how many teachers are planned for each grade level? We will open, we're projected to open with four sections of everything and five sections of fourth grade. So fourth grade is a little bit bigger of a class, that's what the projection is. So we'll have four kinder, four first, four second, third, five in fourth grade, and then four in fifth grade. So that is the projected um, sections to open with. The maximum number of students in each class is, is, is based on a state ratio of one to tw uh, 22 to 1 in K-4, and then um, the district has not changed that at this time. So the information I can give you on that is the maximum number of students will be 22 um, in each class, and then I think we're at about 25 in fifth grade. Um, but that does not mean we will have 22, but that is the, the ratio, the state ratio. And if the board changes at any point, we would adjust that, but at this time, that's what we're staffed on. Um, and then I just mentioned the full staff, as we complete those grade levels, we'll push that out and get that information out to you. And Rhonda Welch is here tonight. She's our district safety coordinator, and I was going to let her address the question on security personnel. Come on up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little short, too. So. Um, when it comes to security, just so you know, most of y'all have probably been um, in another campus before. We have four SROs in our district right now. And what we're going to do right now is if there's an emergency in our district, just like um, our principals do, is they usually call me or Sergeant Pena and we answer the call. Um, some of y'all, whether you realize it or not, y'all live in Ovilla. And so because of that, we will be working with the Ovilla Police Department as well. So they, they may come to the school as well, even though the Midlothian Police Department may come. Sergeant Pena is all over the district a lot of times. Y'all probably, have y'all seen him before? Sergeant Pena, he's housed at Walnut Grove, but he has come to, he's been to Baxter, he's been to Long Branch, he has a kid at Long Branch. So he's around a lot. So that, that's, that's what we're doing as of right now and um, there will be an SRO in and out of your building just like they are at the other elementary campuses. Um, also with the police officers we will have an officer at Bryson and Shiloh in the morning because it's going to be really congested there in the morning so y'all just go ahead and be prepared for that with the traffic. We've already um, anticipated with the four-way stop that we're going to have issues there so you're going to have a friendly police officer so just know that um, <clears throat> he better be friendly. If he's not, um, you can um, let Miss Carpenter know. She'll let me know, and I'll take care of that. I can, I can work on that. So if you smile at them in the morning, um, tell them you appreciate what they do. That goes a long way because they don't get a lot of appreciation a lot of times. And for our crosswalk, 
it's going to be at Judy and Barron. So please um, know that, that that's where your kids will cross in the morning. Um, I don't know that that necessarily has to do with security with the police officer, but that is a safety issue. And so that's where our crosswalk will be set up in the morning. Also, on the fire side of it, just so you realize, um, believe it or not, we probably, our fire department probably goes to a campus at least once every two weeks. So that's normal. I get the call every time they go to a campus. And when it comes to a medical issue or a fire in the building, which we haven't had fires in buildings in a really, 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 really long time, the um, Midlothian Fire Department is the one that's going to respond. So if we have a medical issue at a campus, your kid has an asthma attack, breaks their arm, those are common things that happen. We have diabetics. Um, the Midlothian Fire Department is going to respond. So that's, that's how it's going to work, knowing that we have this school that's in the uh, Villa City. Okay? Any questions? Great, thanks. Y'all are doing a great job staying attentive, thank you. We have lots of great questions from parents, so we want to cover them all. Uh, student records and special programs, will student records uh, those and be transferred to, to McClatchy? Yes, those records will be transferred over. We will have a process in place um, with Baxter and Long Branch and any student at another campus that may be coming over. We will get those records all transferred the right way. Um, and then teachers will be notified of any special program requirements. That's, that's something we do. We will start the year out um, going over 504, special ed paperwork, GT, all of those programs um, with our teachers once we get those documents in place. And we will have this, the special programs of 504 services, ESL, special education, GT, and dyslexia um, at our campus um, this first year. Um, we will not be housing PPCD and pre-K the first year, and then after that, I don't know, but the first year we will not be housing PPCD and pre-K, we will be housing CBI. So we're very excited about that. And start, the start dismissal times, um, those were adopted by the board on Monday night, so it is 7.45 start time and 3.15 dismissal time. So we do have the 30 additional um, minutes of instruction starting next year across the district. Uh, the doors will open for student arrival at 7.20, just everything, same thing if you're used to at your other campuses. And then information on the drop-off and pickup routes, yes, we will make all of that available. Um, as soon as we are done meeting, we, we will meet with the Midlothian Police Department, Avila Police Department, Ms. Welch, and we'll go through um, drawing those routes out and we'll make sure those are, those are made public. Um, we will, uh, be, uh, I want to show you up here on the site map, we'll see if I can do this because I'm being filmed here. Um, we're going to pull the site map up and I'll show it to you and then I'll kind of show you where the parent drop-off lane is. Okay, so here's your site map, and you have Shiloh Road right here. We have the parking lot down here, so you have the bus lane. This is where bus drop-off will be every morning, and then the bus pickup in the afternoon. This is staff parking. We have visitor parking here in the front door, and then that's additional parking if needed. And then we have Bryson running to the north here, and you'll notice our site entry for, for parent uh, car drop-off will be off of Bryson. And that loop, if you're familiar with Miller Elementary, this loop is very similar to Miller. And you also have, um, this is your drop-off area right back here, I'm kind of in this corner. And then the students will come in the building right here between the cafeteria and the gym. So you have the gym right here, the cafeteria here, and the students will enter here to go to their locations in the morning, and then we will dismiss from that same area. So um, once those plans are all finalized, that will be communicated, we will post all of that on the website. And we'll have the, the maps and things and first aid folders at Meet the Teacher, but we'll make sure and communicate all of those things. So I just wanted you to see that the that this secure drop-off and pickup will be in the back of the school, and then the bus will be here on the side um, for that information there. Clubs and activities, we've had some questions about those. What clubs and activities will be offered at McClatchy and how do students qualify? You know, we talked about that process a little bit, but we want our students to be able to have, we, we need to know what they want to do. So we're gonna, once school starts, we will do a student interest inventory and find out what, what is it our students are interested in before we just make clubs that they don't really want to do. Um, so we're gonna wait till we get our students in the building for those things, get an interest inventory, talk through through with our teachers, 
um, what kinds of things they have interest in, and then we'll, we'll work on that process. But I do want you to know that that might be delayed a little bit than the normal campus, um, just because we want to get our student input from all of them before um, we get um, going with those. Student Council on Math and Tathlon, will that be starting up at an appropriate time since we're new? Yes, Math and Tathlon doesn't start till about midway through the fall semester anyway. Mr. Doris is currently the District Math and Tathlon Coordinator. He works through all of that anyway at Baxter so that it'll be an easy transition for us to get that rolling at McClatchy. Um, and then Student Council, we're kind of working through that process right now and how we want to handle that. Um, and we'll share that information with the kiddos when we go out and make a tour um, in May to the campuses. When we go to Baxter and Long Branch, we'll, go, we'll be sure and kind of share with them what that's going to look like so they'll know going into the summer um, how we're going to proceed with that. Will there be an art show uh, similar to the show at Long Branch? And I know it's a good one. Believe me, <laughs> it is a good art show. Yes, we will have some sort of an art, fine arts kind of thing going on at McClatchy. It may not look the exact same as it did at Long Branch, um, and that's okay. We're going to look at some different things and options there, but we will most definitely be show showcasing the music and art programs, the fine art programs at McClatchy. And yes, there will be YMCA after school care available on site. Parent volunteers, um, will DME be open to parent and community volunteers? Absolutely, Mr. Doris even mentioned that a little bit ago. Um, we do the criminal history background checks there on campus. We send them over, get them checked. We absolutely want volunteers, <laughs> excuse me, we want volunteers, whether it's in the library helping him, in the middle helping him, in the classrooms, in the collaboration areas, we are open uh, to having our parents and our community members in the building because that's good for our kids to see us as a family. Um, is a PTO board already formed? No, it's not. We do not have a PTO, so that's why one of the things we wanted to visit about tonight. Does PTO get any startup from existing campus PTOs? That is up to the PTO board once they form, and if they want to talk to those campuses, um, they can do so, but there's no regulations for that to say that there is any startup. Fundraising, um, we'll have one school sponsored fundraiser each year to support the campus activity fund and the PTO, you know, will have their things um, just kind of like you're, you know, used to in your other campuses as well. And then at the end of this meeting, um, those that are interested in talking about PTO, we'll stay, I'll stay behind and we can kind of have those conversations and let you exchange numbers and, and see what you want to do with that so we can get that rolling um, going into next year. What's next? Well, um, uh, there are some index cards that are going to be on the back table, so if you have additional questions that we didn't answer tonight, you're welcome to write those down and put them in the basket. Um, I'm going to be here for a while, so if you want to stay behind and talk to me individually, I'm perfectly fine with that, or any of us. Um, some people I know are kind of on a time schedule, so I don't want to keep everybody here for questions, but know that you can stay and ask questions. That is not a problem. And then everything we ask will be um, on the video and then posted to the website. So we wanted you to know that you have the opportunity and we'll put a Q&A on the web page as well. Um, as we complete the staffing, we'll post those brief bios of the campus, of the grade levels on the, on the web page. And if you don't um, have a Twitter account, or if you do, if you don't, if you do, please follow the campus and follow me personally. Um, I do have a professional Twitter page. I would love for you to follow, put some great things out there when I find things on innovation and collaboration. Um, that would be good for good resources for you to read. Um, but if you if you don't have a Twitter, I encourage you to get one because we have a lot of things out there right now on it. There's just me, and so right now I can't keep up with too many social media things. So we don't have a campus Facebook yet, but we will once we get some some other people um, in line to help manage all of those pieces. Um, EPI has graciously offered to help with school supplies, um, name brand, I've gone through and made sure all of that's um, name brand things, and uh, she is in the back tonight, tonight by the back door, so if you're interested in stopping by the school supply um, pre-package, they've got that set up for us that it can be delivered to McClatchy when school starts, so just like you're used to on your other campuses, we will have that same service to start the year, so um, even though you're finishing at one campus, you will have the opportunity to order for us and have them at our campus when school starts. So what will drive us going into next year and the future is we're going to view our teachers um, as learning designers and our classrooms as learning studios. We're going to foster student engagement. We're going to enhance learning. We're going to empower learners through curiosity and innovation. As you can tell from the video that started the night out, um, that video gets to me every time I watch it because it makes me, that little girl is ingrained in my brain. Foster integration and use of technology as a learning tool. Provide 21st century learning experiences. And why, you might ask? 
because school should reflect real life. And that's what we want school to be at McClatchy Elementary is to reflect real life. And real life is fast-paced world the 21st century learning and experiences for kids and not the same way we learned several years ago. So I leave you with this. We're going to think different at McClatchy, brick by brick. Thank you. Over here and I'll kind of work through that process. PTO can kind of start.